Hello and welcome, it's Terry Sparazande, and in this video I want to talk about 10 signs and symptoms of awakening. Now some of these are going to seem similar, but I'm going to share some nuances about each of these so you can totally understand them. And let me know down below how many do you have, how many have you experienced, and if you like the video and you're on a social site or video hosting site, hit like and subscribe, share it. All right, the first one is that you really start to have a value shift. You start really wanting to connect to really the deeper meaning of life and of things. So in other words, you know, just sitting around watching Netflix all day and eating pizza may not be as exciting as it was <laughs> before the awakening. Now you're like, hey, I really wanna know myself. I wanna journal, I wanna figure out who I am. And, and you're probably less interested in consuming sort of like these, um, you know, prepackaged, you know, entertainment. You want stuff that really makes you think. You may watch a lot of videos and things on consciousness. You may be listening to a show like You Wealth Revolution where we're doing energy work and we're really questioning and understanding who and what we are. The next thing is with people, small talk, <laughs> which, you know, a lot of people do, may become really boring, okay? I've noticed this with me. You know, I'm around different people and it's kind of like people talking about their job or they're going to get a new car or they're going to take this trip and I'm just like, yeah, whatever, right? I'm not interested in that. I'm like, hey, you know, like, where do we come from? What are we? You know, what's going on on the planet? Like these deeper things, even politics, unless it really gets to some fundamental truth about all humanity, like all those like superficial day-to-day -day things get really boring for you. So that's a sign. That's the second sign of an awakening. Now the third sign, kind of similar, but a little bit unique in that it's really about connection. You start to crave real connection. You long for those conversations, you know, that like span an hour but seem like they only you've only been talking for five minutes. Like, you know, when you're just sitting there talking to somebody, then all of a sudden it's like an hour is gone and you think, oh we just started talking. Like what's 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 happening here? Right? You're in your own time warp. You're in your own uh, time jump and you're just connected, you know, and those things you really crave. You start to really enjoy that. You start to really want that. You want to almost exist outside of the construct of time when you connect to people and you really look forward to those types of moments. And I think that's because eternally we are timeless. All right. The other thing is kind of similar, but it has to do with people and some of the masks that they wear. So if you meet somebody that's kind of like projecting something artificial or they have something they haven't worked through and they're projecting like this mask or this facade of like, I have it all together, or I'm great. You're really just repelled by them. And you know, a lot of these are my own experiences, but this one, number four, you don't like phony masks. I'm gonna tell y'all, I've experienced this. Like I have had people where I just instantly like repulsed and, and I am a very nice guy, but I know when someone is leading with a blockage, leading with some unresolved emotional issue, and then they're trying to cover up for it by appearing super successful or wearing a certain brand of clothing and flaunting, it's just, it's just not my thing, right? I'm like, eh, whatever. So that can happen and that can be a shift for you. You also dislike very limited choices, right? Like if there's only two choices, you're probably one of those people, if you've had an awakening where you're like, yeah, well, what about uh, choice three, four, five, six? And this is really prevalent in our time right now. One of the things that the artificial scarcity construct on the planet or the matrix creates is this idea that there's only two choices, right? Look at politically, right? There's either this side or this side. And you see this all the time. Like you're either for a particular, you know, injection in your body or you're rapidly against it and you're this horrible person. And you're like, well, maybe I am for some and maybe I don't like others or maybe I just want to wait, you know, but we were all pushed into that sort of energetic. You see the same thing now. It's like, oh, well, if you want to allow people into a country just to come on in, then okay, that's great. But if you're like, hey, wait a minute, you know, didn't we have a pandemic? Shouldn't we like screen and make sure people are okay? Shouldn't we have certain rules around this? Shouldn't we make sure that people come in through the legal channels? Oh, you know, you're a horrible person. And so it's like either this or this. And in reality, like 
there are multiple ways to do all the good things in the world, but do them with wisdom, discernment, understanding, and balance. And so if you see like looking at the world like, why? Why is it so silly that we have like this choice or this? And you see each side sort of playing each other and you're very aware of that and maybe you weren't before, you've had an awakening. And I think a lot of people see that. The other thing is you see the energy of people as being more important than their words, right? This can extend to all the people you deal with in your life. So for example, like family, friends, uh, people in leadership positions on the planet, you can look at them and someone's like, oh, they're so great. Look, they did this and they, they put this little badge on their thing and you're like, yeah, that, that person's energy is pretty gross. Ugh. You know, and then later you may find out, oh, that person was not really that authentic into that. It was just a facade. So you're actually seeing the energy behind people much more and you're really going with that. So you may have a totally different view and feel like, wow, why, why do I not think this person is good? And then later you realize, oh, that's why, because I've actually seen now the energetic essence behind this person. So if that's any of y'all, let me know down below. Um, you start to really question, this is number seven, your life purpose. You're like, you know what? What am I here to do? What am I here to create? What am I here to bring forward? Rather than just like, oh, you know, I hope I get a job and I survive. You've actually kind of gone up Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Now, this doesn't mean that you have everything or that you have all this, you know, millions of dollars. It's like, even if you have very little, you may even say, you know what? I don't want to just go work at some company doing something I hate. I wanna make a difference. And so you've started to really ask these bigger life purpose questions. And um, you also love time in nature. You wanna spend time with God's creations. You like to be around trees and plants and streams, sometimes even more than people. And this is a big thing for a lot of people who've had an awakening experience. You actually enjoy the silence of your own thoughts, of your own consciousness without always having to intertwine with people. But but there's times for both, but you really start to lean towards loving that time as a recharge. Um, the next one is like you feel in, this is number nine, you feel in to the energy before taking any action. Maybe at one point in your life, you're like, oh, if they said it was good, I'm gonna go do it. Uh, oh, the website looks good. I'm gonna go you know, visit this place. But you're like, hey, let me feel into that. Or maybe it's a person who's like, hey, you know, come over here, I have this thing for sale. Uh, I remember uh, last week I was buying a little bike for my kids and this lady had one for sale. And I kept thinking to myself, you know, it's just something doesn't feel right about this. This isn't right. And everything looked good on paper, everything seemed great. And I just said, you know, this isn't the right thing for them. I need to pull away. And I found myself actually like still wanting to like prove myself wrong. And then eventually when all these weird synchronicities happened, like the, the street was closed when I tried to go over there, I couldn't get over there. I had a weird light come on in my car. <laughs> I was like, okay, what's wrong with my motor? All these little things were like slowly trying to warn me, this is not the right thing, okay? You should not be doing this. And then eventually I was like, all right, I'm turning around, I'm going home, forget it. And the next day I found the perfect thing that I was looking for. So we start to feel the energy before taking action. And even as we're taking action, we adjust and we change our path because the energy starts talking to us. And the last thing, which is number 10, is that we start to see that everyone on the planet, even our leaders in the world, are playing a role. They're playing a character. Now, I don't mean that they're fake. I don't mean that they're not real. But what I mean is they're actually playing a role based on their belief systems, their prior experiences, and their resolved or unresolved emotional blocks. So in essence, they're not any better than anyone else. We're only seeing what they have worked through or still need to work through, and it's a projection. So what the end result is after an awakening, item 10 is you stop holding people as like idols or perfect beings or like savior messiah types and all of this, and you start seeing them just as people with their own 
fallible characteristics. A, a very, very telltale sign of somebody who's still working through energetic trauma is someone who has like a cult-like following for somebody else. Somebody who's like really just like completely following another person. What they've done is they perhaps have shut off their own light, their own truth, their own power, and now they're looking to that person to give that power to them. So they just become like a raving fan of this person. There's nothing wrong with having people that you're fans of. I'm fans of a lot of people. They give me ideas, inspiration to find my own truth but I don't hold them higher than me. So these are 10 of the awakening uh, signs that I've uncovered and I've experienced recently and for the last 20 years. But if you have more, share them down below. This is not an exhaustive list. Let me know, do you agree with all of them? Are some of them not ones you agree with? And did I miss some? <laughs> Let me know down below. And if you enjoyed this, go ahead, like, subscribe if you're on YouTube or one of the social sites. and. Uh, let me know what you think. Take care, everyone. Much love and thanks for watching.